least, we appreciate the positive spirit that the senior class have. And it, and uh, truly, they, they have been such a positive influence on this campus, and we appreciate them very much. You know, it was a year ago that uh, we were under this pandemic, and there was this lockdown, and we had uh, to do graduation with the staff. We actually took uh, three days, and we traveled to four different states and did uh, graduations uh, on sidewalks, front yards, garages, parking lots. Uh, and so we, uh, I remember one time we were in a park, and so, you know, those are times that we'll never forget, yet at the same time, we're kind of glad that that type of experience is behind us and that we can have an in-person graduation like this. What I do want to recognize, too, is that the, there are many members from the graduating class of 2020 uh, that are here. Uh, and if you don't mind, if you would just stand, let's give them a hand for Sean. So. So with that, friends, families, guests, and of course, graduates, we welcome you and are glad you are able to attend Highland View Academy's 2021 graduation ceremony. This COVID year has brought its challenges, but God has been good to us. And because of his mercy and grace, we've been able to come to this celebration. Will you stand for me and we'll have an opening prayer here. Our loving Father in heaven, truly it is with gratefulness that we could come here for this celebration. And we're just thankful that you have watched out over us, you've taken care of us. Lord, we just couldn't have done it without you, and we know it. All of us recognize that. And yet at the same time, we do see that there's a world that needs to know about you, about your saving grace, and Lord, we want to take these young people and dedicate them to you and that they will be able to fulfill the mission that you have planned for them. And so, Lord, as we go through this celebration now, we invite your presence and ask that your spirit be with us. And we pray this all in the name of our dear Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. Our class aim is to meet you in heaven. Our motto is acta non verba, which means deeds, not words. And our verse is Psalms chapter 20, verse four. May he grant you accordance to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. Hi guys. Hey. Okay. Um, can everyone just do me like a huge favor right now? It's kinda it's kinda kinda a little cringy, but just do me a favor. I'd like to get a video of everyone. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'm just gonna be like, yeah, and if you guys don't go crazy, this will be really awkward. So please make some noise. Okay. All right, three guys, oh wait, three, two, one. Thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I've thought a lot about what I would say when I got up here. If anyone knows me, uh, they know that I have not just been at HV for four years, but in fact, more like 18. <laughs> So this felt Woo! very important. So I wanted to say the right thing. And I've thought a lot about what other people would say if they were in my situation. Some of my classmates, I think, are more worldly and knowledgeable than I am. Perhaps that makes them more qualified to speak up here than me. But I'm the one up here, so I have to speak for myself. So then I realized, 
okay, so I'm gonna have to speak about something I know, and we have to know it really well when we get up here and talk in front of everyone. So I thought really, really hard about something I know, and I realized something. It's only one thing I know. I know nothing. No, I know nothing, literally nothing. I swear, I feel like I know nothing all the time. And maybe my classmates are surprised to hear that. I know I've been a bit of a know-it-all in the past. And my mom is sitting there in the crowd. Hi, mom. And she looks a little shocked herself. But it's true, I know I know nothing. It's also an awkward thing to admit, um, considering we're all about to get a piece of paper in about 40 minutes that symbolizes that I know something. But I don't, I know nothing. I know nothing for sure. For instance, I thought for sure last year we'd all have this COVID situation under control and we'd be able to have a normal graduation. I was wrong. And I thought for sure come this year, you know, everything was so crazy. I thought for sure there's no way we would have a normal graduation. But look at us now. We're all here. Yay. Clap for I mean, I've been wrong and mistaken so many different times in my life to the point where it borders on self-delusion. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys a quick story time, but it requires two key pieces of information. All right, first is a geography lesson. Does anyone know about the town, the nearby town of Funkstown? You guys know that, Funkstown? Okay, cheer, I guess, if you want to. Yeah, okay, if you guys don't know, it's a town about 10, 15 minutes. I drive through it all the time just because I live near here, so that happens. Okay, and then second piece of information necessary for the story. Are you guys familiar with the song, Funky Town? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, cool, cool. I won't do like a full rendition here, easy to know, so it goes like, won't you take me to Funky Town? That one, um, <laughs> sorry, Mr. Nino. <laughs> okay, well, growing up, uh, I lived around here, I'm always passing through Funkstown, and I thought to myself, oh, I, I come up with this nice little jingle. This is really good. I was really proud of myself. I was like, this is my song that I've created. I thought I wrote Funky Town. <laughs> Except it didn't go Funky Town, it went Funk's Town, <laughs> which I'll admit wasn't very good. But I was four or five at the time, so maybe give me a break. <laughs> yeah, so I really thought I came up with it. And then one day, I'm in the car with my mom, and she turns up the radio. And guess what's on the radio? Won't you take me to Funky Town? <laughs> and I was like, wow. Someone really stole my song, and they messed up the lyrics. <laughs> See, this is what I hate about being wrong. You don't know you're wrong until you're proven wrong. So until then, you really actually believe that you're right. Like to me, my little four or five-year-old self, that was my reality. I was the writer of Funky Town. That was my song. I wrote it. Funky Town was mine. But I didn't write Funky Town. No, I couldn't probably spell Funky Town at that time in my life. I was five. <laughs> so since we don't know when we're wrong until proven so, this means that we all live in a constant risk of being wrong, just living life wrong. And this has way more dire consequences sometimes than the example I've just given. We risk hurting people, wasting our potential, living a frustrated, unfulfilled life if we're wrong about things. <laughs> After all, I've sworn I was morally justified in the moment to realize I wasn't. I had hurt people without the just cause. I've sworn something was my life's calling just to grow to hate it. Again and again, I've made life decisions unconscious of the errors I was making. And this is the risk we all take in living. The risk that we're going to be wrong and wrong about things we can't even anticipate yet. But we can't give up. We have to keep on living. We have to keep on living with that risk. And we have to keep on relentlessly pursuing the truth. We have to keep on trying to be right even if we never really reach this in our lifetime. It's a noble effort just to try. And I really believe this. It's the mindset I've had for a long time, you know, the relentless pursuit of the truth, you know, try to be your best all the time. And I think it's a good mindset. But recently I realized something. I was wrong. <laughs> it's true. It's a good idea to, if you see a flaw in yourself, try to fix it, or you make an error, you try to correct it. But the thing is, <laughs> I mean, I was just wrong, 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 wrong all the time. <laughs> Problem is this, it kind of drives you crazy. Yeah, it drives you crazy. I've been stressed, whacked out of my mind recently, and everyone in my class has seen it, everyone's school has seen it recently. And it's because there's this constant evaluation of everything you think, you know? 
This constant picking apart of every action and thought to try and gauge its correctness, and it's exhausting. It's not productive. It's kind of the opposite of that, actually. It only ends up getting you more confused. It's like your present self is judging your past self, and the past you questions your present mindset, and what's wrong, and what's not, and what's up, and what's down. It all gets flipped around until you feel seasick. It's like, this is a visual metaphor. Please stick around with me for this. <laughs> Please bear with me. But you know, you guys ever stood in between two mirrors and they're just reflecting back and forth against each other again and again and again until there's so many different versions of yourself, all these different reflections and everything's just green. You can't tell which one's you. Well, that's how it feels sometimes. You can't tell what was really right about and what you were really wrong about and how you should feel about anything at all. But this is no way to live. I spent so long feeling this constant internal criticism that it was only the way to edit myself to be a better person. But as someone recently pointed out to me, oh, she's behind me. As someone recently pointed out to me, this is way too big of a burden for any person to carry. We cannot perfect ourselves. We are not all knowing. That is a job of a power much bigger than us. So this is what I'll say. We should all aim to be humble enough to admit when we're wrong. We should be see the mistaken belief or character flaw and admits there and do all our best to try and correct it. We should pursue the truth. It's a noble effort. But also we should be humble enough to accept that we're going to keep being wrong. We're always going to realize that there's another mistake. We're mistaken about something else. What you thought was the truth at the time was in fact not true. And you'll have to repeat this process again and again and again. Because none of us are perfect. And none of us really know, know anything. And we should be kind enough to ourselves to admit that and humble enough to admit it too. So one more time, I'll repeat it. Be humble enough to admit when you're wrong and humble enough to accept you'll be wrong again. Okay, I don't know about you guys. Class for a second. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm really nervous right now. Um, not just because I'm up here, but <laughs> I'm nervous because we're in this really weird transition period in our lives. We don't know what the next phase for us is quite gonna look like. It's full of so many things. And I'm scared of all the new things I know I'm gonna learn and the things I can't even possibly anticipate that I'm going to learn. It's terrifying. In the next few years, we're gonna be challenged in so many new ways, and we'll learn lessons we didn't know we needed, and we're gonna be proven wrong a billion times over. With all these unknowns, sometimes I feel like I'm leaving this place with more questions than answers. I don't know what my life is gonna look like. I don't know if I'll end up in the career I think I want, or where I'll end up living, or who will be my friends, or who will be my new family. I can't anticipate any of it. And for a while, I thought this meant I had failed, because I didn't know any of this. I felt disappointed that I hadn't found answers to these things and all of life's toughest questions. You know, how couldn't I have just 18, you know? I had plenty of time. <laughs> I don't feel like that anymore, guys. Instead, I feel incredibly grateful, because the times I've been wrong in the past have made me stronger, and times all of us have been wrong in the past have made us stronger. So maybe we don't have all the answers yet, but at least we're strong enough now to go out and get it. I'm gonna miss you guys. And I'll remember all the lessons you guys taught me. I'll remember all the lessons you guys taught me. And I'll remember all the lessons you guys taught me. But I really, really wish that you guys keep pursuing the truth and keep trying to find those answers even if you never quite get there. I hope we find the truth in our lives. And I really hope you guys find it. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Isabel Sigulinski, and I'm the class president of the class of 2021. First, I want to give a huge thank you to all the teachers, staff, and students here who have impacted our lives and have taught us so much. And to you guys, these past four years have been an amazing experience, and each one of you has made a contribution in some way to make these the most memorable and enjoyable years of my life. So I want you to take a second with me and think back on the past four years here at HVA. Not all of you have been here, but you know, the ones that have. Just take a second, take a little flashback with me. Freshman year, we were completely divided and we barely talked to each other. On orientation day, Dean Omar, I'm sure he remembers this, um, he was walking around and he was showing us like where everything is on the campus. You know, he's like, okay, here's the girls dorm, here's the boys dorm. 
you know. And we were freshmen, so we, we didn't know each other at all. So we were barely talking, like literally not talking at all. We were just walking kind of awkwardly spaced on the hallway and the sidewalk, I mean. And, and he goes, hey, yo, guys, not everyone talk at once. But nobody laughed. Nobody laughed. So it was just incredibly awkward. So we were all just like, oh, um, sorry. <laughs> and, you know, it's just funny. It's just funny to think because look how far we've come. So it's just you know, it's funny to look back on. Um, let's move on to sophomore year. Sophomore year, we were still pretty divided as a class, but we got to know each other a little bit better individually. I'm sure you remember English class shenanigans, like when we would throw a stuffed animal across the room when Dr. Zern wasn't looking, or when we would snicker and pretend to be asleep all at the same time in her class until she noticed. And then when we had our class party, um, and for some reason the boys were wrestling um, in the cafeteria. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Um, and we were doing each other's makeup. It, it was good times, good times. Junior year, we really began to unite at senior recognition when it was the first time that we had to wear matching outfits and escort the class of 2020 into their senior year. We also had our junior talent show that year, which was an amazing experience and it was so much fun to put on. We all spent hours working on set design, memory, memorizing our lines, making sure everything went smoothly, and we really got to spend time together as a whole class and bond. Then, senior year. Ah. Uh, Senior year, guys. This was the most our class has ever been united. It was like right at the start, something just clicked. And um, I'll, I'll never forget like that feeling. Something just changed as soon as we became seniors, like all in our, our minds. We started off strong with Scavenger Hunt, which was an absolute blast. Jalen had just joined our class. And I'm sure you remember when he showed up late, of course. Um, Jalen proceeded, they called Jordans in Scavenger Hunt. I don't know if you know. So most of you know how scavenger hunt works, but they call for Jordans, and he didn't know how the game worked because he missed the instructions. So <laughs> he just, they called for Jordans, and he like ripped off his shoes super fast. He's like, oh, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And um, he, I think, yeah, he like ran up to the, the middle to like give his Jordans, but he didn't give it to our runner, Ian. So we didn't get the point, but it's okay. It's a thought that counts, but. Then we have, in my opinion, one of the top two trips out of my entire high school career, senior survival. You guys know, you already know. This is where we truly came together as one. I got to know people in this class so much better in just three days, it was unbelievable. We poured our hearts out to each other and I will never forget that. Guys, I know over the past four years, we have had many arguments and as class decisions, you know, all types of things like that, such as eggplant and gold, um, such as what should our senior hoodie design be, which we argue so much we never got a senior hoodie, um, but, uh, you know, also what should our class gift be, you know, we spend more time arguing about that than actually deciding, but <laughs> it's moments like senior survival and class trip and senior bonfires that make these disagreements seem silly. On class trip, we swam, we swam together in the ocean laughing and seeing who could catch a wave all the way to shore. And at senior survival, again, we poured our, our hearts to each other for hours, literally until our sponsors had to be like, okay guys, we need to go to sleep. Like you've literally been telling each other how much you appreciate each other for like three hours now. <laughs> At our bonfires, we made s'mores and sang along to Ian playing the guitar. So many good memories. When we leave the stage here, I will miss all of this so much, more than you guys even know. I will miss Reagan's bacon strip nose. <laughs> She's gonna hate me for that. Ian's constant high-pitched singing and dancing all the time, literally 24 seven. Annoying Josh just to get his reaction trying to convince Jalen there's an essay due next class period. <laughs> he falls for every time, guys. <laughs> and many more. All of these memories will live in my heart forever. And I mean it when I say I love you guys so much. Although our time together is coming to an end, I know all of you will go on to do amazing things. 
Whatever you end up doing in your life, I know you have brightness in your future. Don't be sad that this is ending, but be happy that we had such a great four years or two years or one year, three years, whatever. Um, and just be thankful about the time that we've had together and the moments and memories we've shared. I love you guys. And guess what? We made it. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm Stephanie Jaquay. I'm the one of the class historians. And I'm here to introduce our speaker for this morning. She is a very hardworking woman who has supported our class through all these four years, if not more. Um, we just want to say that on behalf of Class of 21, we thank you so much. It has truly been such a great privilege to have you as a mentor, an advisor, a counselor, and a friend. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to HVA's Campus Ministries Director, Mandy Korea. Good morning. Ooh, that's loud. Let's take a deep breath. My dear class of 2021, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm going to be facing them. So I don't mean to give you my back, but they're over here. So my dear class of 2021, look how far you have come. Wow. I distinctly remember you as an incoming freshman class wide-eyed and mystified. Some of you were very quiet. Some of you were not quiet enough. That was a year of new beginnings and fresh experiences. You are important. You are smart. You are talented, loved, good-looking, and blessed with opportunity. Since that time, there have been so many moments, and Reagan and Isabel have already named a few. I'm going to name a couple more. School trips, Campus Cup events, which you won this year. But there were a couple times you lost as well. <laughs> Black Rock hikes, weekend get-togethers, campfires, sports games, sleepovers, late-night study sessions due to procrastination. Jokes, which, guys, some of you are still not very funny, but it's okay. Costumes for Spirit Week. All of those interactions with the staff of them telling you to please take off your jacket in the ad building. Stories, performances, tournaments, interesting tangent class discussions, class fundraisers like the play that you didn't have, awkward YouTube videos in health class, and the many, many bathroom break stops by my office door and me asking you what class you were supposed to be in. There are tears, there have been laughter, confusion and understanding, anger, sadness, joy, pride, and humility. And now here we are, four years later, at the same new beginnings and fresh experiences are upon you. The 21 graduates, the 21 smiling faces of the HVA class of 2021. I'm sure that this weekend you've heard many people say, congratulations! and people telling you that they're proud of you. And I'm sure that you've been asked the dreaded question, so what are your plans for next year? You've received advice. Some of this advice you've asked for. Some of it you probably have not asked for. This afternoon, you'll take pictures. You will give many hugs. And hopefully, you'll receive a lot of cards with money. And you will continue to have to answer the question, so what are your plans for next year? It's a lot to take in, but I hope that you have been soaking in every single minute of it, minute of it, and that as you've heard advice and messages from Reagan, from Isabel, from Dean Omar, from Pastor Caesar, and other people, the teachers, your staff, family, and friends, that you have not allowed the quantity of the things that you've heard to overshadow the quality of those things. You guys have already accomplished so much. 
Evie, you have studied the art of artists from near and far and discovered the world through their eyes. Adam, you have road tripped across an entire country, which I'm sure you had many food adventures on that trip. Ben, you have explored the mountains, the mountain ranges and the forests of El Salvador. Mara, you have reached a level lofty enough to participate in an international competition. But I'm sworn to secrecy of what it was for. Jalen, you have come face to face with wild animals on a South African safari. Angel, you have stood in the shadow of the oldest tree in all of Mexico. Stephanie, you have experienced a free fall in a plane thousands of feet in the air over Brazil. Ian, you have defied gravity over the waters of Virginia on a wakeboard. Reagan, you have seen an original Van Gogh with your own eyes. Nicole, you have been featured on the cover of National Geographic. What? Je <laughs> yeah, there's fame here. Jemiah, you have performed in an NBA stadium for thousands of people. Josh, somehow you have managed to ride a cow, a wild cow in the Philippines. Cameron, where's Cameron? You have been granted special permission to drive display cars in a museum. Arna, where's Arna? You have learned and conquered entirely new languages and cultures. <laughs> Danny, you have explored, where's Danny? Oh, I thought you didn't show up, okay. You have explored the tropical waters of, of caves in Southern Mexico. Michael, you have ventured beneath rainbow waterfalls in New York. Shay, you, <laughs> Shay, you have worked in law, for, are working in law firms with powerful lawyers. Levi, you have walked the streets of European countries. And Caleb, you have flown in the cockpit of a plane over Wyoming. Between all of you, yes, Christina, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped your line. It's not, it's not on purpose, I promise. Dino Mar did that to you yesterday. <laughs> it's because we're looking back and forth, you know. Christina, you have parasailed over the waters of, of the Philippines. Between all of you, you have done things that some people never get to do in their entire lifetime. Yes. Isabel? Oh, Isabel, <laughs> you have white water rafted on the waters of Montana. Did I skip anybody else? Let's pause. Has everybody been called out? Okay, all right, we will move on. Between all of you, you have done things that some people will never get to do during their lifetime. But one thing you have not yet done until today, and that is graduate from high school specifically from Highland View Academy, joining an elite club of alumni, if I do say so myself. Woo! Don't you see that the entire world is still yet to come and is in front of you? There are so many things to come yet. All of the things that you guys have done so far, the things that I've named, the things that we have not named, are wonderful examples of mountaintop experiences, blessings and exciting moments. Life after high school will be full of growth, transition and many new experiences. There will be ups and there will be downs. There will be good and there will be bad times. But life is not merely about the mountaintop highs or the valley lows. It is all of the moments in between. I've been grappling with, with what it is that I could tell you about because there are so many facets of that walking in between to prepare you for and to tell you about. And I feel like I need to say something clever or memorable but honestly, it's quite impossible for me to go over everything in one commencement speech. I can't do it. But if we had the time today, I would tell you about relationships with others. And I would explain that it's important to be kind, even if someone doesn't deserve it. I would explain that you have to put others before yourself and go the extra mile. I would tell you to give people the benefit of the doubt. that they have for themselves to be slow to speak and quick to listen. 
I would say that you shouldn't forgive and forget, but instead you should forgive and move forward. Learn to accept criticism and to apologize and to never assume that you understand someone else's circumstances. I would advise you to educate yourself on what life is like for those who are different than you. And I would, I would tell you that though you might think that you can do things alone, you can't do, do so long term or effectively. And so it's important to build a support system and to be a part of someone else's support system. I would encourage you to actively work to create peace, but not at the expense of someone else's humanity. And remind yourself that people and relationships are more important than anything else. If we had the time today, I would remind you about your relationship with God. And I would say to love him, to put him first, to pray all the time, and to make time for him every single day. I would explain that he truly does want to do marvelous and wonderful things in and through you. He desires for you to seek justice in all walks of life. And he can take your brokenness and turn it into blessings. I would stress that God does not cause pain. But he can use it as a tool, and he promises that you will not go through it alone. Just because he doesn't give you exactly what you want does not, does not mean that he's not there. He's forever on your side, working for you, working on your behalf, and even when you don't feel him or forgotten about him. I would remind you that just as exercise builds a muscle slowly over time, so does faith grow. It's a process. It takes time. It can be painful but requires action and work. I would encourage you to remember that he is a true refuge, a source of strength, power, and unfathomable peace. And that your relationship is one that you should dedicate yourself to and commit yourself to. It's okay to stumble and mess up, but it's a daily decision for you to quiet your hearts and listen to his voice. If we had the time today, I would teach you about yourselves, telling you to not settle for the bare minimum, to not give up, to have integrity, to be passionate, to fight for things and make good decisions the first time. I would share that nothing will ever be perfect, so good vibes only is not a real way of living life. And that it's okay to ask questions and ask for help. And that you should trust your gut feelings. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. I would tell you that in making a decision, if you think that you don't know what you're supposed to do, most of the time, what? I've said this to you before. Most of the time, you already do. You just don't like it. Don't avoid difficult things. And in failure and suffering, it's important that you get through those moments and learn from them. I remind you that you need to stand up for things even when you are the only one standing. And to not be afraid to speak up when something is not right. And to check yourself when you are angry or jealous. It's okay for other people to be successful. I would say that it's okay to admit when you're, wor when you're wrong and make mistakes. That humility is important, but you should not just acknowledge your, your wrongdoings or your mistakes, but work to improve them. I would teach you the importance of being who you are, no matter who is around, to choose your friends wisely, and that there's no such thing as normal. Change and growth are constant, and that learning who you are and what you're to do in this world is not something that happens to you. It requires your participation. I would ask you to do things that are right, even if you never get recognized for them. To create the world that you want to live in and to never ever be the reason that someone chooses to give up their dreams or their uniqueness. And I would hope that you remember that balance is important. Learn to choose your battles wisely and it's okay to give up sometimes if the thing that you're giving up was never meant for you to begin with. You will never do, and, and, the, and that the little things in life matter. That if you can do the little things right, then you can do the big things right. But alas, we don't have time to go over all of those lessons today. And truly, there's no need. Because this is what we have been preparing you for since you came to us. For most of you, that was four years ago. For some of you, that was just a couple months ago. Either way, I have complete faith and confidence in what you have learned from the faculty and staff at HVA, your family members, and from your fellow graduates. You already know these things. You've already been learning them. Now is the time to commit to these lessons, to use these lessons, to live them, and to teach them. I have to admit, 
I have a love-hate relationship with graduation weekend. It's very exciting to celebrate you and to reflect upon the honor that it is to watch you grow. But it's so full of goodbyes. Life is not a destination that you arrive at once you've mastered knowledge and experience for you just to live the rest of the life of your life chilling along. It is a constant journey of growth and learning. People and relationships, a journey of mountaintop experiences and valleys of pain and heartache and all of the days in between. I resonate with the words of Paul that he said to his friends in Colossians and I share them with you today on behalf of the faculty and staff of HVA. Be assured that from the first day we heard of you, we have not stopped praying for you. Asking God to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to his will and an understanding of the ways in which God works. We pray that you'll live well for him, making him proud as you work hard in the places he puts you. As you learn more and more about how God works, you will learn how to do your work. We pray that you'll have the God-given strength to stick it out for the long haul. It is his strength that helps you endure the unendurable and makes you strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful he has for you. And if you would excuse me just a second, I have something that I'd like to say just to them. My dear friends, as you go on to new things, I wish you just enough. I wish you joy with just enough discomfort. I wish you prosperity with just enough struggle. I wish you health with just enough pain. I wish you love with just enough discord. But most of all, I wish you growth in the in-between times. With Jesus Christ as your savior, guide, and comfort. You may not be always able to see him or feel him, but I promise you that he is there. Look for him. May God bless you and bring you peace as you continue on your journeys. Thank you so much for allowing me to sit up here with you today. Class of 2021, I love you guys. I'm so incredibly proud of you. Congratulations. People to make witnesses and service a central part of their life is essential to the educational goals of Seventh-day Adventist schools and the mission of the church. Each year, the North American Division sponsors the Caring Heart Awards given recognition to secondary students who have demonstrated a personal commitment to making the world a better and sharing the Lord of God. This year, the Caring Heart Award is for Ana Lopez. <laughs> Ana, you can come to the stage to receive it.
Good morning. As an alumnus of Andrews University, it is a privilege to present the following students with the Andrews Partnership Scholarship in recognition of their academic and leadership potential. To Stephanie Jakeway, $48,000. <laughs> Lopez, $56,000. To Michael Selwyn, $32,000. And to Levi Walker, $56,000. Good morning. As a proud parent of a Southern Adventist University graduate, it is my privilege to present the following scholarships. Uh, to Benjamin A. a. Cruz, $10,000. To Angel Hernandez, $34,000. To Ian Lopez, $26,000. Yes, to Joshua Nerona, $26,000. To Christina Rada, eight thousand dollars. <laughs> to Isabel Sigolinski, twenty six thousand dollars. <laughs> to Levi Walker, Good morning, buenos dias. I am pleased to be here today and recognize the academic achievements of the graduating senior class of 2021. I'm, I bring greetings on behalf of the administration, faculty, staff, and 1,100 students of Washington Adventist University. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Juan de Canales, the Director of Admission and Recruitment for the Office of Admission of Washington Adventist University. The scholarships awarded today are based on information supplied by the Highland View Academy to Washington Adventist Office of Admissions and calculated just on GPA only. That is not including the test scores that can rise the amount that we are presenting today. We are presenting presidentials of $40,000, uh, trustees, which is uh, $24,000, and getaway of $16,000. These are just based on academic, do not include a scholarship for awardees of leadership. And uh, before I 
call the names, I want to say that before I give these awards, I want to express my gratitude to Highland View Academy staff. It is an honor to, to work with you and to the parents for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for all the long hours and effort to make this moment so exciting. It is an honor to serve the Lord with sir. Class of 2021, you are an inspiration. Despite the challenges we all face, you strive to be here today and celebrate a milestone in your academic journey. As you go on in life and careers, remember who you serve and work as if working for the Lord, always vested with kindness and compassion. Congratulations to all of you, parents and the staff. And now let's call the awards for the amount of 16,000, Cameron Poland. Christina Rada. For the amount of twenty four thousand, Ian Ian Lopez. For the amount 24, Josh Omerona or Josh Omerona. Yeah. Isabel, for the amount 24,000, Isabel Sigunleski. <laughs> for the amount of 40,000, Angel or Angel. Hernandez. For the amount of 40,000, Stephanie Jigwe. Last but not least, for the amount of 40,000, Regan McCain. actually no formal affiliation with Walla Walla University, except I have a current former student that's there, Curtis Morris. He's also here in the audience. Woo! But I'm happy. <laughs> but I'm happy to represent them. Uh, Walla Walla University wants to extend their heartiest congratulations to the entire class of 2021 on their completion of high school, especially amid these difficult times. It is also an honor to celebrate by officially extending the Enclosed Achievement Leadership Scholarship. Our scholarships are extended to seniors who applied and were admitted to WWU. They are calculated based on cumulative GPA or test scores and any leadership they have shared with us. So Walla Walla University is presenting one scholarship today to Levi Walker in the amount of $58,000. <laughs> Here, I do have some further business. My name is Colleen Lay. I'm the STEM coordinator here at Highland View Academy. I represent a STEM team which is comprised of myself, Ms. Rose Mutiso, our biological and environmental science teacher, Mr. Kenji Nomura, mathematics and technology teacher, Mrs. Ophelia Bariso, our conference STEM coordinator, and our 17 hardworking, dedicated STEM students. On behalf of this team, I, it is my pleasure to grant three STEM certificates today. In 2015, Mrs. Bariso founded our STEM certificate program here at HVA. Her purpose for this program was to educate and inspire students to be technologically literate, innovative, become problem solvers, collaborators, critical thinkers, so that they would be ready to make a difference in the world beyond our campus. STEM certificate students enter our program as freshmen, 
They must complete the core requirements for the college preparatory diploma, maintain minimum grade requirements for STEM courses and electives, complete 20 hours of STEM Center community service, and also complete an 80-hour internship in a STEM-related area. You can imagine how challenging uh, quarantine and a pandemic has been for our department. Uh, we, you know, how do we have a hands-on department on Zoom? Um, but our students did complete all of their requirements and they did it well. They have been a valuable part of our program and we are going to miss them greatly. Our graduates completing the STEM certificate program requirements are Ibilola Ana Adomi. <laughs> requirements and are eligible to receive their diploma. <laughs> Graduating with honors Isabel Ann Sigolinski. Cameron Trent Holland. 
graduated with high honors Maral Ma Dukar. Salutatorian Levi Conley Walker. Cavalcanti Lopez. <laughs> Graduating with high honors, Ballet Victorian Regan Elizabeth Ann McCain.
Nicole Anita Moreta. Yamaya Kalina Morris. Graduating with honors, Joshua Nerona. Tenoso Rada. Arna Rajimbeko. Daniel Ramos. Graduating with honors, Shay Isabel Standish. Caleb Edward Warham. Congratulations, class of 2021.
We would also like to present before you today two very special achievements. And um, these go to two individuals who have worked extremely hard, not just this past year, but over the last four years. And so this year's salutatorian of the class of 2021 is Levi Walker. <laughs> And the valedictorian of the class of 2021 is Reagan McCain. This is my diploma. <laughs> so it's sort of symbolic of this too shall pass. You know, it's one of the things that we take a look at is that we know that the Lord is in control. And that in spite of all that happens, you know, we know that he has the best in mind for us. Um, before I actually give the uh, challenge to our young people here, I want to say the thank you to the many parents who have uh, through your prayers, through your emails, have communicated with us here at HVA your support. You don't know how valuable that is, you know, as you go through this time, you know, trying to figure out how do you run a boarding school during a pandemic, or how do you keep all these protocols and stuff in place, what do we do to have a safe campus, you know, and, uh, and maybe it's in spite of all we do, it's just because of your prayers that we've had a good school year. And we praise the Lord. There's, there's so many of you that have just done extra special for us, extra special things for us here at HVA uh, for the staff, uh, just for the support of our program. Can't thank our coaches enough for the hard work they've put in and it's been hard and challenging at times just trying to get the season rolling. Uh, we think of our homeschool association, you know, of uh, just doing neat little things for us. Uh, so your support makes all the difference. Now I do want to say that even though that your child may have graduated, this do keep us in mind. Uh, we got a work to do here. We know that the Lord is coming soon and it, HVA is on a mission to train these young people and to help them be ready for Christ's soon coming. And so we need that continued support here. I also want to mention something here is that uh, probably most of you don't know is that uh, I actually have a grand student here. Now let me explain to what that means is that one of our staff members is actually one of my students years ago. Uh, Luann McCain was one of my students back in Mount Vernon Academy. <laughs> and Reagan, and Reagan is my grand student. So, uh, I love all these guys, you know, it, and it's, it just warms my heart. And I'm very proud of what they have been able to do. And I say that in a sanctified sense. You know, is it that uh, the effort that they put into it and each doing their part? I want to mention one other student that uh, I've had since it was this big, before it was even in school, okay? And now uh, I had him as, as a pre K. Um, my wife actually was able to teach him as well, and now he's graduating here at HBA, and that's Levi Walker. <laughs> And, you know, I can't say enough to my uh, campus family, and I wish we could have done more things this year. But uh, we did have a good time, and we want to continue on with it. And Cameron was part of my campus family for the last couple of years, and it's just been a joy to, to have the guys that be able to do uh, cool stuff together. But now I want to address the whole class. You know, now I was told that I only have, like, three minutes to do this, so this is going to be... Uh, relatively quick, but yet at the same time, I hope it is meaningful 
because it is the charge as such from the principal. And so young people, you know, we take a look at you as the graduating class of 2021. And I'm gonna take my cue here to turn my back, okay? So please excuse me. You know, it never it seems like there's never a dull moment here at Highland View Academy. We can be thankful to our Father in Heaven who gives us so many blessings. During this pandemic year, it is my hope and prayer that in spite of the many challenges, you have grown nearer to God and that Jesus has become a closer friend. We've had a very good school year, and I can say better than a very good school year. We actually have had an excellent school year. Um, all I can say is that, you know, we wish the best for everybody, but the Lord has been with us in a very special way. And I really do believe it is because of the prayers of your parents. And so remind them and thank them for what they have done. Remember what the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Whatsoever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do to what? Do to the glory of God. This is how you're going to find real success. Your dreams, your aspirations and goals will only be successful as long as you dedicate them to glorifying God and by reaching out and giving hope to a dying world. I hope that in all of this, that in spite of all the chaos and the confusion and fear that we see in this world, is that you find comfort in Christ. God has placed each of you on this earth for a special purpose, and that is to make this world a better place for others to live in and to lead them to Christ. We have seen prophecy being fulfilled before our very eyes. And now is the time to issue the loud cry and to tell the world of the good news of God's amazing grace and Christ's soon coming. Remember, you are Christ's light to the world and his salt of the earth. We have come to a tipping point in earth's history and our world has changed. We will not go back to the normal we once knew. There are powers in place which are intending to attack your individuality and try to, co to co coerce you into conforming to a worldly, st worldly standard. My challenge to you is this. Listen. My challenge to you is this. Protect your individuality. Protect your individuality your God-given individuality. Stand in your own God-given individuality. Don't let anyone or anything do your thinking for you. The Bible tells us not to be conformed to the things of the world, but let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Remember, you were created in the image of God and are endowed with a power like that of your creator, individuality, power to think and to do, to be everything God created you to be. I'm reminded of a quote found in the book Education. Right now, the greatest need in this world are for men and women who will not be bought or sold, men and women who in their inmost souls are true, honest, and kind. Men and women who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Young men and women whose conscience is as true to duty as a needle to the pole. Godly young people who will stand for the right, though the heavens fall. Graduates of Highland View Academy, use your life to honor God. Trust him because he has the best in mind for you. We are reminded in the Bible. We are told to trust in the Lord with all your heart and to not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him. For the Lord himself will go before you. He will not leave you 
nor forsake you. Do not be disappointed. Do not be afraid. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Read your Bible daily. This will help you to determine and sift through the chaos and corruption and the confusion that you see in this world. We're also told that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Where do we find truth? It is in Jesus Christ. It is important for you to remember the Bibles that we gave you the other night is that you use those and study from them each day. They will be that light that will be able to help you through any situation that you face in life. Pray without ceasing. Remember when life gets difficult, pray. Prayer is the breath of the soul. You can never pray too much. All of us here at Highland View Academy wish you the very best. God be with each of you. Amen. Amen. because it's something that I tell them almost on a daily basis. You know, we have our chapels right here. Okay, you can see the access on the floor where we've kept everything social distance. And uh, every morning I, I try to welcome the students that come in that are from the community. But as the classes leave, I stay where Tatiana is right now. And I wish them well. And one of my classic sayings or slogans that I give them is press on. Hello, graduates. Um, I'm here to welcome you into the Alumni Association. That's my job here. So as a uh, former student of HVA, a graduate of HVA, um, there was a poem that I would like to share with you today that was read at my graduation from Southern, and I felt like it was a fitting uh, welcome into being an alumni. So this poem um, is called The Bridge Builder, and it was written by Will Allen Dromgol, and it goes like this. An old man was going a lone highway, came at an evening cold and gray to a chasm vast and deep and wide through which was a flowing and sullen tide. The old man crossed in the twilight dim. The sullen stream had no fear for him, but he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength with building here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build this bridge at the evening tide? The builder lifted his old gray head Good friend, in the path I have come, he said. There followed after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. This chasm has been a knot to me. To that fair-haired youth may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I am building this bridge for him. So this, um, this is a charge to you. As you go from here, in your time here, uh, you have had your share of pitfalls and you have your share of bridges as well. And as you leave HVA and into the next chapter of your life, uh, I encourage you to not only walk thankfully and gracefully across the bridges built by those before you, but to be sure to build bridges for those that will come after you. Um, you've, had, you've heard a lot of advice, as, as many have stated, you know, from, from the people that have come before you, the bridges that have been built. Don't forget to continue to build bridges to put your stamp on the world and uh, continue to represent HVA as well. So I'm honored to welcome you, the newest batch of uh, bridge builders into the Highland View Academy Alumni Association. <laughs>
It's time for these masks to go, that's for sure. So, I think we've had enough of those, but uh, you know, um, now as we start to look ahead for Highland View Academy, we want to consider and on and let the class of 2022 please stand. These will be our new seniors at Highland View Academy for next school year. We're looking for the energy and their leadership to be able to press forward. Everybody gather together in the center here. Good morning. Um, my name is Angel Hernandez, and I was the class pastor of the class of 2021. Um, to close, we're going to have a closing prayer, so please stand for prayer. Um, let's pray. Dear God, um, thank you for this wonderful, wonderful journey that we had at HVA. Um, thank you for helping us throughout these four, three, two, or even one year here. Um, thank you for bringing us all of us here and all of us closer. Please help us on our separate journeys and please help us um, come back to you and please help us be the light in the world. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. Thank you. 